Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, uh, I'm going to do a short demonstration on how to take and draw down between centers. So to draw down between centers, I'm gonna go ahead and clarify what that means. That means you have two center points or two points of reference that you're going to take and draw down in between. Now this is a little different of an operation clearly than just drawing something out on the end of the bar. But nonetheless, this can be a very handy and challenging exercise for you. So I really hope that you uh, give it a shot in your own shop after watching this video and uh, just, you know, test your skills. Now, there's a lot of different ways of taking and doing this. Uh, there's a lot of tools to help you with this process. You'll see me use the guillotine tool. It's a great way of cr initially creating set downs. Uh, you know, in order to isolate that material to keep a nice clean shoulder on the parts that we don't want to have forged versus the others. But you can also do this right at the edge of your anvil um, to great effect just by simply hovering to the edge and good hammer control. Now, I like to do a little bit of a method called walking on or basically walking up to the shoulder. So I start maybe in the middle uh, I'll establish, I'll start into the shoulders just a little bit behind my mark, and then I will slowly creep that hammer as I'm hammering and I'm watching the cause and effect of my hammer blows all the way up into the shoulder. Um, that's one way of taking doing it. Again, I call that walking on. So I kind of walk on to that shoulder a little bit. So I have a piece in here that's eight inches long, one inch wide and quarter inch thick for you across the pond. Uh, that is 200 mil long, 25 mil wide, and roughly quarter inch uh, or six mil thick. So I've got this whole piece in here. I've got one piece in here heating up already. And then I'm going to just kind of show you a bit of my stance a little bit, and then we'll go into a lot tighter shot, and it'll just be work from there. And, uh, you know, and then that's where we'll end the video. I'll just end with my drawing out shots there. But try this out. Give it a shot. It's a great forging exercise, and I, you know, I hope this will help increase your hammer accuracy and control in the projects that you do uh, out there in your own forge. So this is up to temp now, or pretty close to. We're going to start on the far side of the anvil, not the near, which is closest to you. We're going to start on the far side. We're going to pick a spot right about in there. And again, just behind that area, turn it full 180. And then we're gonna to come to the near side. You don't wanna start right on that with like half on, half off blows. You wanna walk onto it. And we have to keep it up at a slight angle so this way we're not bending this thing right round. Straighten that up. And then hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. During this process, you want to keep everything straight, neat, and tidy. So being able to do this is very uh, advantageous for you for like forging shackles, um, shackles where they've got meat on the end or a good amount of thickness of steel but they wrap around and then you put a bolt through them. Those type of things. I call them clevises. Uh, that's probably not the correct terminology for them. It's just what, I, what I've always called them. Uh, it's just like a bow, like a shackle. They come around and you put, put a pin right through and it works really great that way. So um, again, great way of making that type thing. Being able to forge between centers allows you to really open up the creative possibilities. Everything from doing door handles to drawer pulls to, uh, again, those bow shackles I talked about, uh, door knockers, you name it. it. It really does help out to have that additional expression that you can do. One of the other things you can do to test yourself as I'm working on this here, another thing that you can do to test yourself 
is keep trying it on progressively smaller and smaller bar stock. So we're going to center that up a little bit. Let's get a little off track. It's important to pull, okay, it's important to take and forge a full 180 degree revolution each time you do this. Full 180 degree revolutions. If you don't do that, what ends up happening is that the work that is supported on the anvil there's a greater surface area of contact, so there's less movement versus the force on your hammer is a smaller area of contact, so it's a smaller force of contact, so it's gonna stretch that material quicker. It's more concentrated, I should say. And so it's gonna stretch the top material quicker than the bottom material moves. So what that ends up with is you end up getting where your shoulders start drifting to where you have a small shoulder on this side and a long shoulder on the side that you've been hammering with your regular hand hammer. Also during this process you may want to take and flip in for in the piece to be able to not get too long of a taper going this way, to be able to work your near side better. So the challenge should be to try to keep draw this out as long as you can and keep it as even in thickness. So this end should be exactly the same thickness as this end and it should be the original parent bar thickness across the top. So we're going to flip that end for end so this way I can focalize my blows on the other end and we'll go from there. I'm also going to point out at this point while you're watching this video, uh, it's almost impossible to not get a double bite at some point in time in trying to do shouldering work. We're not machines, we're not perfect. Um, that doesn't necessarily ruin the piece, but that's why I start where I start walking in that shoulder and sometimes I'll just not take the chance and I'll go straight to a guillotine tool with a pair of flat dies and just forge in that shoulder really nice up tight close to my punch mark or wherever it needs to be and I'll work it up to those points and then finish it off nicely or file it nice and square. Uh, so again, you can do that in your work. That's the benefit of walking onto the shoulder versus starting right at the shoulder and drawing away. Um, just, uh, just food for thought there for you. You can try it a bunch of different ways. Try whichever way makes, makes you happy there. So now we'll make that the far side of the anvil. Where I feel like I've got a little better control at getting that shoulder established. Come back to the near side. One of the other things I try to do is I try to aim to get this stretched out about the length of my anvil. Or about the width of my anvil, I should say. So there you have it. So that's drawing down between shoulders. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just continue doing this in the next clip. Let the video play out that way. We're just gonna continue to draw this out a bit until it fits right over the anvil top here. Um, and then this will be part of a drawer pull later on that I plan on installing inside my house. But without further ado, if you like this content, remember to leave a like uh, by the end of the video here. Share it around with friends. 
uh, if you want to take and challenge them to do something fun in the forge this weekend. And if you like to support the content that we like to uh, do around here, doing more videos like this, please check out our website over at blacksmithpdfs.com and consider purchasing a power hammer plan there uh, and or a uh, digital download around business like an ebook. So that's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed. God bless you. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.